Oh, hey, are we ready to go? Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to a very special edition of Revolutionary Health. My name is David Malbranch. I'm an internal medicine physician, public health advocate, and activist. And I am feeling extremely doctory today because I got my scrubs on with my white t-shirt on. Um, <laughs> today's a very special day because we have a special topic, but we also have a very special guest. The illustrious Dr. Marlon Bailey is joining us from Arizona State University. He is an associate professor of women and gender studies at Arizona State and also the author of a fabulous book. And I want to get this right, so I'm going to read it. Butch Queen's Up and Pumps, Gender Performance and Ballroom Culture in Detroit. So would you all please welcome the illustrious Dr. Marlon Bailey. Hey, Marlon. Hey, thank you. <laughs> it's good to have you here. So um, I hear you have some other titles out of Arizona State University outside of just simply the Associate Professor of Women and Gender Studies. Tell us I'm a little a, bit about yourself and your work. I'm currently the uh, wine, Distinguished Weinberg Visiting Fellow at in African American Studies at Northwestern University. Um, and I am a Black queer ethnographer, theorist, researcher. I do research on and write about sex. Black gay sex and um, HIV and Black LGBT cultural formations. Excellent, excellent. And um, I'm really excited because we are not talking about uh, Kavanaugh today. So although Ooh. the rest of the media is, we are actually going to talk about monogamy, which is a topic um, that crosses the lips of a lot of people, both in professional and personal circles. I can say for me, Marlon, I know you can probably say as well that this is a topic that comes up a lot um, and is laden with a lot of societal judgment, um, a lot of personal beliefs, personal values. And so we're going to launch into that in a second. But first, I want to remind everybody who is watching to check out the counter narrative at our YouTube channel, subscribe, like our videos. We have close to, I think, 30 videos for revolutionary health on counter narrative on YouTube. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as counter narrative and also on Twitter at building desire. You can check us out there as well. And during the course of this 30 minutes that we'll be having revolutionary health, if you have any comments about monogamy, your opinions, experiences with monogamy, please send us some messages, make a comment, ask a question, whatever you want to do. We'll try our best to get to all the comments and questions during this time. So Marlon, why don't we start with talking about what exactly is monogamy? Give us a textbook definition of it. Oh, monogamy is the state or condition of being in a relationship with one person, uh, sometimes supposedly throughout your lifetime, which I don't believe ever happens or it happens rarely. Um, so you're already monogamy, your bias on this right now. Is that what you're doing? Okay, go monogamy ahead. is also the basis of the logics of marriage. It's the um, when you're married, you are, it's actually illegal to be married in this society to be married to more than one person at a time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so monogamy is um, being in a relationship, intimate romantic relationship, um, sometimes assumed to be a sexual relationship with one person at a time. Right, right. So it can either be just a relationship, you're just with one person, or it could be you're just having sex with one person. You're in a monogamous relationship. So, I mean, this is kind of the loaded question I hear a lot in social media circles and friends and research, so on and so forth. Is monogamy natural? I don't think so. Uh, I think that um, monogamy is a social construct. It's an institutional imposition. And it's also not universal. Uh, necessarily. There are some societies that are not monogamous or allow for different kinds of relationship configuration. So it is particularly um, a social expectation and institution in the U.S., um, in the West. And I don't think, I think it goes against um, human tendency. I hate to use the term nature, but I think it goes against human tendency because monogamy is based on an assumption that you will be totally, um, fully, at least from a romantic, sexual, intimate standpoint, um, with committed to one person um, throughout your lifetime, um, or at least for an extended period of time. Right. <clears throat> 
interesting because, uh, I mean, when I hear you saying that definition, I mean, there's a lot of societal stuff into it. So you can think about Christianity, you think about marriage, you think about these kind of value systems, you think about gender uh, dynamics, like control of women in heterosexual relationships. I think for me, um, and kind of stepping away from like the definition of it, when I think about monogamy personally, it's always been defined to me as just having sex with one person, mm -hmm. and usually in the context of a relationship. And I think I agree with you that I don't think it's natural. Like, I think it's natural to be attracted to a whole bunch of different people and you can have sexual feelings and desires for different people. And I don't think it's natural to just have sex with one person, at least not for me over the course of your life. That being said, I do note that for me personally, when I get in a relationship and I'm into somebody, it's not really a forced thing, but almost if I'm into you, I kind of don't want to be sexual with other people. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's an interesting thing because I know, like, I always espouse, like, you know, yeah, it's monogamy is not natural. And, you know, it's natural for people to be attracted to other people, maybe have sex with more than one people at one time. At one time, And there are different definitions that come into play where someone will say, yeah, there's what's called a serial monogamist where, you know, right. someone just kind of always has a relationship and they're just having sex with that one person and there's never any crossover. Um, and then there's other kind of relationships where you start having sex with somebody else before you end the previous relationship. Mm -hmm. For me, I think if I'm into you kind of emotionally and physically, there are times in my life that I haven't wanted to have sex with other people, even though I've been attracted or maybe even been tempted. I just didn't want to do it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I think um, I agree that um, that is actually the uh, tendency for the way in which our society in this current time describes uh, relationships, monogamous relationships, there are several um, there are several differences, or there are several things that complicate the whole notion of monogamy. Um, some of what you said, you know, tend the, the there tends to be a privileging of men, particularly in heterosexual relationships to have, um, you know, that it's, it's more ex acceptable for men to have, um, you know, other relationships or at least have sex with um, other women outside of their relationship. And notice I said sex with other women outside of their relationship right, because right. there's a whole other issue if they're having sex with other men. Right, right. And, and not, um, women are not afforded that same privilege or at least are not expected to uh, um, adhere to that. And often uh, people will say that they ascribe to monogamy and in actuality they are not. So there is a way in which we perform monogamy because that is a societal expectation. Right. It is in some cases seen as, it, it's kind of, there is a, for some, for some people it's stigma, they are stigmatized when they are openly, um, um, extramarital <laughs> or, or extra monogamous in their relationships. Um, and so they end up um, being non-monogamous, right. but saying that they are monogamous. And part of it is about wanting to have your cake and eat it too. So on the right. one hand, you don't want to suffer the stigma or to be ostracized or penalized for cheating um, so that you lie and you pretend as though you are mm -hmm. uh, being monogamous when you're actually not. And the third thing I would say is that part of why I say it's a social construction or it's an institutionalized thing is because when we, we are socialized into thinking that monogamy is natural, that we are socialized into thinking that monogamy is the only viable, um, healthy, positive way of engaging in a relationship. And so we tailor our emphasis and our um, interests and the way we engage in intimate romantic sexual relationships in that case. And then when we breach that, we feel horrible. Right. Um, and then we go into these other things like lying and pretending as though we're being monogamous when we're not. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of judgment to it, which is always interesting. And in this age of like social media, and specifically, I mean, revolutionary health, we're talking about us as black gay men. 
there's a lot of layers to it. So to me, I mean, you always see these couples that are on social media and they're always together and they're smiling and they're taking trips together and they're kissed up and hugged up and wishing each other happy anniversary and you're the love of my life. And it's this whole projection of this kind of monogamy, perfect relationship. And then one of them is kind of in your message box, in your Facebook messenger, direct messaging you. Uh, hey, could I get that dick? Could I get that ass? Like, what's up with you? And you're thinking to yourself, well, oh, you're painting this. So I think there's an interesting dynamic that goes on where a lot of us would think, well, this is kind of a judgment call. Like, aren't you supposed to be monogamous? But the truth is, a lot of times, we don't know. Like, social media projects one thing. And we don't know what are the details behind that person's relationship. So all we see are these smiling faces mm -hmm. and these wonderful trips and these anniversary celebrations. And you're the love of my life. You're my soulmate. But you don't know whether people are sexually fulfilled. You don't know whether they're happy. Um, and in black gay relationships, the reality nowadays, one partner could be positive. One partner could be negative. That could be playing a dynamic in that. And then also like the sexual roles is interesting as well. So it's interesting to talk about monogamy in the context of like roles you have. So for instance, I've seen people who are in relationships and they may be exclusively the bottom or exclusively the top in that relationship, but they are attracted to other people in different ways. So there's a top, he's a top in his relationship, but he's going to be a bottom for somebody else, but he right. can't be a bottom in his relationship because his partner is strictly a bottom and won't be able to perform mm -hmm. as a top but that top is not going to be sexually satisfied because they may be curious about being a bottom or they may be a top just in that relationship and they actually love bottoming, mm -hmm. um, but not with their partner. And so when you think about monogamy in that context, you know, and all this like judgment and morality, you know, is it really wrong if somebody in a relationship works out something with their partner when they're, when they decide not to be monogamous? Right. And does that mean that the relationship is less than? You understand what I'm saying with that? Absolutely. And I think the um, the key to working out, the key is to work out things. I think the the way to have any kind of relationship, whether it be monogamous or non-monogamous, is for communication. So that is the important, the most important thing. It's also the most difficult thing. Right. Because people have difficulty being honest with both themselves and their partner in terms of what they want, what they desire, the complexity of what they want sexually, just what you just explained around the way we tend to um, condense sexual desire and pleasure under right. these particular practices right. without acknowledging that what we desire and what kind of sexual practices we want or sexual things we want to do, it depends on the person. Uh, like for oftentimes, instance, for instance, I have to get ratchet with this because I'm just thinking about it, and I would disappoint Charles Stevens if I wasn't ratchet on it. <laughs> so let me get ratchet. So, like for instance, supposing there's a top, and this is all like wrapped up in masculinity and stuff. Like a top is supposed to be hyper masculine in kind of the traditional gender role sense, but supposing this top likes to get his ass eat, or he likes to use toys, or have a dildo. What is his partner going to think if right. his partner is used to him being that kind of masculine, stereotypical, prototypical gender norm? Like mm -hmm. the top, don't touch my ass, don't lick my ass, don't do nothing near my ass, ain't nothing touching my ass. But then when he flips up his legs and starts to lick, he starts groaning a lot and enjoying himself. What does the bottom think at that point? Like, hmm, what have I gotten into? Like, is this really the top that I enjoy? Does this contradict what the top is? Can the bottom say to themselves, well, you know, this is just the dynamic of his, the fluidity of his sexuality, and I need to embrace that. Like, what's the reality in relationships <laughs> when people have this? Because I imagine it can go sideways real right. quick if someone finally admits or, you know, someone, a couple brings in a third person and the bottom in the relationship all of a sudden starts fucking the shit out of somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the top is looking at him like, oh my God, you've never gotten hard for me. You've never expressed a, a desire to screw mm -hmm. me. And now you're going to town, you know, on somebody else that's in the opposite. Like, do you right. see complications in relationships with this? I mean, you mentioned communication. What do you think about all that? Those, I mean, those are the, you know, those are the complications that don't get worked out, that end up right. ending many relationships. So, um, and, and also it's, it's about being honest with oneself in terms of what one wants. So I have friends who, um, you know, who's versatile and he primarily will be a top, but he likes to get some dick. 
Right. Um, he has been in relationships and he always complains that they're not enough versatiles or not enough tops around. Right. It's just so many bottoms. Right. And and like strict bottoms, right? right? So the kind that will not put their dick anywhere near your behind. Right? Right, right. And so he has been in relationships where that has kind of I don't know if it was a single issue that uh, that uh, uh, ended the relationship, but it was a primary issue. Right. And I think this gets to um, the whole issue of what is healthy? What is a healthy relationship, whether it's monogamous or non-monogamous? And, and I'm speaking from experience that it's difficult to have honest conversations about what you want, what you don't want. And part of it is one that makes it difficult is, you know, you feel bad, you know, um, and you don't sometimes don't want to admit to wanting certain things and not wanting other things. The other thing is that it's person to person that what I want from you is different from what I want the other from the other person. Right. The other the uh, the other thing is that there is a lot of monogamy breeds. I I. I believe um, monogamy breeds possession hmm. and, um, and insecurity, right? So the whole notion that you belong to me and I belong to you is right. highly problematic and I think leads to relationships having difficulty because you overburden your romantic relationship and you look to it to get everything that you need right. at the expense of other um aspects of other relationships that are healthy and sometimes those other relationships can be sexual or offer a sexual um alternative to what you are doing in your uh, romantic relationship so it just becomes hard to talk about but if you talk about it and you actually work through it then that can um, you can actually in my view extend your relationship because you have to think about monogamy um, and, and I, and also let me just point out too, is that I don't really subscribe to the notion that non-monogamy is the opposite of monogamy, Right. that there are different kinds of monogamy. Right. So there is sexual monogamy and emotion, there's emotional monogamy and sexual non-monogamy. Right. There's, there is sexual, um, non-monogamy and emotion. I think I say the same thing twice. There, is, but there are different variations of monogamy, and it's not just a total thing. There are different kinds of forms of exclusivity and openness that you can have in one relationship, and it doesn't have to have to be the same. Yeah, and I was going to ask you because I I started with the question I was thinking about this topic, like is monogamy healthy? And then I'm kind of thinking to myself, well, maybe that's the wrong question. And the question should be, how do we make relationships healthy? And right. it shouldn't be just focused on the dynamic of monogamy. Because I think you're right. Um, I know relationships where people don't have sexual monogamy, but they have intimate monogamy. Yes. Or yep. they have other kind of forms of intimacy that they share, that they've been communicated, that's been communicated. I think it's interesting, particularly for Black gay men, kind of how we navigate these things, especially with a lot of the issues around race and mm -hmm. you know, masculine performance and roles. Um, and just dealing with a lot of the trauma that we carry around with ourselves, that whole notion of kind of like possession and what that means. And if you're not monogamous anymore, then, you know, there's something really bad or someone doesn't possess somebody or it means that someone else, the partner is not desirable anymore. Like, right. Right. Okay, so you're cheating on me. You're sleeping with somebody else. So you don't find me attractive anymore. Am I not enough for you? And I think that's the wrong question to ask. But I think it's it's complicated enough where. You have to, and it's complicated enough of, of a concept, but then you throw like two black gay men into the equation and we're going to throw a lot of different variables intersecting things into it where we have to kind of cope with all these isms that we deal with, all these standards, all these stereotypes. And then we're trying to navigate our relationship and whether we're going to be quote unquote sexually faithful with each other and what that means. Yeah. Um, I just think it's difficult, but I think your point about communication is a good one because every relationship is different. And it's hard because with social media now, we see an image and we immediately make a snap judgment. We immediately mm -hmm. make an assumption about what their relationship's like. Um, mm -hmm. I know there are tons of relationships I see on uh, social media where I look at them and I'm like, oh, they must be really happy. Or, oh, he's the top and he's the bottom. Oh, look, they look both like they're versatile. Oh, I bet you he's fucking around behind his back. Like, you can look at all these things and you make snap judgments about them. But the truth is, we don't know 
what's going right. on in everyone else's relationship. And so I don't really think there's a right answer. Um, you know, you kind of have to do what's good for you. I don't know if there are any um, questions or any comments that we've had coming in, if anybody is saying anything, but that would be if uh, anyone has a comment. I do. Charles Stevens has a question. Hold on a quick second. My question is, what if a partner wants to be in a relationship with a um, or is it a couple in a couple? Like, what what should they do? Right, that's a great question. So, Marlon, I'm gonna throw that to you. Um, if you're in a relationship and your partner wants to be in an open relationship, but you don't. And I'm sure there are guys who are watching who have been in that scenario or either in it now. Uh, what would you recommend? What do you think the answer should be or your advice? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I think the main thing is to communicate with each other uh, and be transparent about what is it that how do you how the each partner conceptualize the relationship in terms of what they need? Right. Um, obviously, the. Um, the person who would want to have an open relationship is, um, is suggesting that there are some other needs that he has um, that are not necessarily not think, being fulfilled, but he wants to explore some other possibilities. But one should not, and this is the, the, the tough part, one should try to resist the, the tendency to see it as you want an open relationship because I'm not enough. Right. Um, I think that that's where we really fall into a pit. We get into this pitfall of um, um, monogamous ownership and not um, understanding that not only do our, our, our relationships multi-dimensional and that we have a variety of needs, some of them asymmetrical. I mean, what I need is not going to be the same as what you need. Right. How, but I mean, and how is it, Marlon, how is it, how is it coming across though? Like if you look at ourselves as black gay men, we're told we're not enough because we're black. We're told we're not enough or we're deficient because we're gay. Um, and you have these kind of two competing things and it almost seems like, so in our relationships, when someone actually withdraws from you or says they want something else sexually, um, yeah. that's gotta, like, it's, it, it's gotta hurt a little bit more, I think for us. Um, because we're told these messages all the time. And then ha to have it be told to us on a sexual level, a very personal, sexual and intimate level by another black gay man that yeah. we are trying to love and have a connection mm -hmm. with. Um, it's, devasta you know, it's devastating. It's devastating, yeah. It's devastating. And um, I you know, can't say that um, one, you know, that even if I was presented with that, if I was in a relationship where the, the desire to be open was not mutual that I would, uh, I would not fall into thinking, well, I mean, why did you want an open relationship? Am I not enough? <laughs> Am I not enough? Even knowing full well that it may not be that case. It also can be that case. And if it is that case and that person um, needs, then the discussion needs to be about, well, what do you want to be in this relationship with me? Right. Really. Um, and that is a conversation that also needs to be had. Right. And so I think that the, the best way to uh, get at resolving that situation, determining whether you stay in that relationship or you do, or you don't, is that you really have to kind of find, try to find out what the person wants and need, what each of you wants and needs. And then you come you may come to the point where you say, well, I can't get what I need from this relationship and accommodate that at the same time. That's just not for me. And then that's when um, that that relationship needs to transition into something else. Yeah, I almost think like people have to have these discussions and it's kind of a cliche, but you say like what a deal breaker is. So yeah. It's kind of like having these conversations up front and saying, well, OK, what's a deal breaker to you? If I were to cheat on you and have sex with somebody else, is that a no, no, that you just say the relationship can't continue? Or is that something you can deal with? And I almost think it, it comes, I think when people have open relationships, they have these discussions as if you're just kind of in a relationship for the financial security mm -hmm. or some other security. And you're basically trolling around looking for anyone you can fuck um, at any at the drop of a hat. And I think mm -hmm. that's not the definition that I've seen portrayed in a lot of black gay relationships. An open relationship means it's almost like a maturity thing to say, well, okay, we love each other, we're sexually attracted to each other, but we may have desires that we don't feel for each other. So if something happens 
and someone steps out and has, you know, sex with somebody else, that's okay. But it's not necessarily always that they're looking for it. Um, but maybe just the acknowledgement that you're human and that it'll happen. Um, yeah, I mean, and, th and then again, there's also like a judgment on that. Like, so what if one of the partners wanted to be in a relationship and then was still looking for sex actively? Like, what would be bad about that? Or why would we judge that as opposed to saying that, you know, the person that just lets it happen, if it just happens to spontaneously combust, whatever, is kind of less likely to be judged right. or less immoral in society because they're not actively looking for other sexual partners. It's just kind of laden with a lot of assumptions, I think, and morality in it. And I mean, let me, I can just say wh where I am, how I've gotten to the point where I am uh, a supporter of non-monogamy and I'm very skeptical of monogamous relationships is because almost every couple that I know, particularly those who have been in a relationship for several years, are either openly open or open undercover <laughs> or some mixture of the two, meaning that they have an agreement. Okay. I don't want you to tell me about it, but, um, you know, do what you need to do. I just don't want to know about it. Right. And then there are some that I know who they have an agreement that we're open, um, sexually. Um, and then there are some who there is no agreement. There is no, um, assumption, but one, at least the person that I know is the one that's uh, doing the non-monogamy, um, but but not claiming it. The other thing that I think that we have to um, think about, the other dimension of relationships, too, is that fina financial piece. And this is something, and you know, as I get older, um, I'm realizing, too, that um, some, you know, there, there's a financial uh, situation in terms of I'm more financially stable. Mm -hmm. I may um, encounter someone who was not, but there are other things that that person can offer me that I'm not getting. Right. So I think that when we think about, particularly when we're talking about Black gay men, we have to think more expansively about what kind of relationships we need and what kind of relationships are healthy and what is healthy to us. If I'm, you know, if I am um, having a difficult time finding someone that I feel I'm compatible with because I have very rigid notions of what, you know, what kind of, for example, what kind of financial position that person needs to be in, then I may be, um, I may be shutting, you know, foreclosing on a possibility of getting with someone who may not be financially in the same situation that I am, but may offer me other things in return. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to kind of think about that. The other thing, another um, added thing is that some people come together to co-parent, you know, right. and that's their main aim. And, and they are monogamous um, for those purposes and non-monogamous for others. Right. All right. Well, listen, um, this has been a great conversation. We have to close things out now. I'm receiving. So oh, wow. any final, like one final thought on monogamy from you before we depart? Explore all possibilities. Ah, I think I like that. Um, I would also say your point about communication and fluidity is a good one. Uh, monogamy may be good for you at certain parts of your life. It may not be good during other parts of your life. Allow yourself to kind of explore the possibilities and explore yourself as you change and you're more fluid in your definition of relationships, your needs, um, and communicate with your partner openly. So that'll take it for us today. Uh, Dr. Marlon Bailey, I appreciate you being with us. And thanks to all okay. of you for turning into Revolutionary Health. Remember again to check us out on Facebook, The Counter Narrative, Instagram, The Counter Narrative. Um, uh, Twitter is going to be at Building Desire. And then you can also check out our YouTube page and please subscribe and like our videos. Until next week, we will see you at Wednesday at 7 p.m. But thanks for tuning in to Revolutionary Health.